You know what, guys? I should really give my sequel and Persona and uh, uh, MariaDB more chances and make more video about them because they are badass databases. And let me explain. Unlike Postgres SQL, my SQL and MariaDB, which comes from my SQL, has the ability to change the underlying database engine, how it talks to the disk, and that's powerful. And I talked about these uh, database engines in that video I re referenced um, a few stories ago. And uh, essentially the idea of having uh, my ISIM or AnnoDB or RocksDB in multiple tables. So yeah, that's that's been always a, an attractive feature of MySQL. I don't use it enough. I, I used it a lot back in, I mean, the early 2000s and mid 2000s, but not that, not anymore. Doesn't mean Postgres are bad at all. It's just like Postgres, Postgres team have one engine to worry about. That's it. That the engine that you have. I don't know what engine they are using, right? But that's a very specific engine for that. You cannot change it. So there's an advantage for that. So they're gonna squeeze every single performance out they can get off their engine, right? All the use cases, they know the engine they're working on, they're gonna squeeze all the performance with that. Versus MySQL and Persona and, 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 and all. Whereas the other features, of, I, you can argue that the features is in the engine itself, but in mice and, and the DBMS does other stuff. It's like a, almost like a thinner layer over the engine, but uh, it's very interesting. Still, I gotta give it to the MySQL open source community because the MySQL is, is a layer and that, the engine is also like a, almost like a pluggable component. So you, someone can write their own engine and plug it in MySQL or uh, MariaDB. And that's what Facebook did, right? Facebook came up with RocksDB as an engine, right? Well, they also made it into a database, right? If you want it, but, but someone took that engine and ported it to MySQL. And that's what Facebook did, right? Facebook came up with RocksDB as an engine, right? Well, they also made it into a database, right? If you want it, but, but someone took that engine and ported it to MySQL. So now there is an engine called MyRox. I guess it's, yeah, it is an engine called MyRox that you can just install and just like that, plug it into my, your MySQL and you have an LSM tree. Pretty cool, right? And uh, I believe that's one of the reasons why uh, Uber moved from Postgres to MySQL. They moved for other reasons, but this is a very attractive feature to move, guys. Flexibility of the engines. What about you guys? What's your favorite database? What do you use on a daily basis? Let me know in the comment section. I don't know if I'm gonna compare Microsoft SQL Server with Post, uh, with these open source databases, but if I would, I'm gonna put it in the same boat as Postgres since it's always just a B3 and you cannot change that database engine to something else. Again, comparing these databases is very, very unfair, really. We need to sit down and look at all the features of all these databases and then really compare. And really depends on the use cases. For instance, I'll give an example where I prefer Postgres over all of these databases. Transactional DDL. You know, I can start a transaction, do many DDLs like insert a table, create a table, add a field, and then I can roll back all that shit. MySQL, for example, and I, I think Microsoft SQL Server and even Oracle don't have this feature. Like you don't have transactional DDL. Once you do a DDL, you commit that transaction. There's no going back. Exactly, that's correct, right? And uh, let's talk about that for uh, a little bit. And uh, DDL and DML is has always been a core property of any database. So DDL stands for data definition language. Things like create table, things like alter table, things like create database, things that define your schema. While DML stands for data modification or manipulation language, which means insert statements, insert into, update, delete. You're manipulating the data. And this is the main difference. And for the longest time, transactions applies only on DML for since database were invented. So that means, hey, I'm going to start a transaction. I'm going to insert, 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 update, delete, delete, update, update. And then something happened, roll back.
However, DDL were never on almost any databases. They are not transactional. That means if you're doing an insert statement and then you're doing a create table, that, uh, trans that query that you did will auto commit. However, DDL were never on almost any databases. They are not transactional. That means if you're doing an insert statement and then you're doing a create table, that, uh, trans that query that you did will auto commit. That could lead to undesired behavior, right? Because if you insert a few rows and in a transaction and then you create a table which commits everything and then you violated some referential integrity and you think you rolled back, but no, all of this thing has committed. So for the longest time, all databases never have this feature, right? So if you begin a transaction, you create a table and then you alter another field and you did a bunch of stuff and then you say rollback, no, those tables will not be removed. They'll be committed. The only database that I can think of, and guys correct me if I'm wrong, Postgres. Postgres supports transactional DDL. Transactions with DDL, not just DML. Obviously, every database supports uh, transactions with DML. In MySQL version 8, they came up with this thing that's called Atomic DDL, and I was confused as, as hell. I was like, what the heck is an Atomic DDL? And I looked up and it's not what you think, obviously. So Atomic DDL in a nutshell, if you have like a create statement and you say create table T1, T2, T3, T4, and let's say T4 has a problem with it, you, you fail to create it, all those tables will not be created. That's it. The key is have, you have to have it in a, in a single statement, right? You cannot do like create table, semicolon, then create table three, semicolon. You can just do alter table. No, that will not be atomic DDL. That's the only difference I can tell, which is, to me, it's, it's useless. Again, guys, every database has pros and cons, and, and really, we cannot compare and favor. It depends on the use case, right? Every database will have really a good use case. Like, there is no bad or good database, in my opinion.